and pray. Yeah. You know how hard we all prayed and, and, and we stood together and we came together as, as a church in unity for the most part. And with, we actually got to witness what unity looks like when we all come together. And they say, I think it's like, is it the st stats like 89% of evangelical Christians voted this president in? That, it's the first time in, I don't know, it's since 19... What? What? I mean, I think it's 48 or something, or ever. How many voted in 2012? What's the percentage versus well, today? Well, it was actually the lack mm. of evangelical Christians that didn't vote in 2012 is why Obama got reelected. Mm. Uh, if you count the people that were, the evangelical Christians that were registered to vote and the people that were evangelical Christians that weren't registered to vote, but of age, it was 30 million. And we actually lost that election by just a couple of million votes. So those even same evangelical Christians turned out to vote in this election. Right. And here's the thing. 30 million did not vote? Did right. not vote right. in 2012. That's right. Are you hearing us? Yes. yes. That powerful army right. stayed home. Wow. We can't stay home. We can't stop praying. That's we it. can change America. Yes. We can change the world. That's right. We can see the greatest outpouring of God's yeah. love and spirit yes. upon this nation. Yes. And But there is warfare. It's good against evil. That's right. That's and we're right. seeing warfare. I mean, in this week, as we're taping this show, there's so much terrorism going on. In one day, wow. yeah. Germany, what, 9, 10, 11, 12, I think it's dead at this moment. At a Christian market festival. Right. Yeah. Christians under attack. Yes. Radical Islamic extremist took a truck and plowed through these people at this Christian Christmas event, which don't forget, last month in the ISIS magazine, this is the exact type of slaughter that they were asking for, saying, listen, get in your vehicles and plow down as many people ISIS as... ISIS has already claimed responsibility, mm -hmm. but most of the leaders, political leaders, still won't accept the fact that is terrorism. Denial in a term that's cropped up in our media in recent weeks. Oh, it's fake news. Uh -huh. isn't, it, isn't that an incredible term oh. they've come up with? Are we all yeah. fake? You're right. Is the what we're feeling news. and thinking fake? Yeah. Fake news. This is Orwellian. This is, they're going to try and shut us yeah. down by saying fake news whenever we try to speak the truth. People are bypassing the mainstream media, uh -huh. so they're getting it through social media. Mm -hmm. So fake news is a way to start censoring social media. Who's going to define what fake news is? Who gets to define that? Right. Oh, a government agency. Well, it, now it's, it's in today's news, actually, who they have picked. It's, it's called uh, Snopes. Snopes. Oh, that's right. S-N-O-P. It sounds like, looks like Snoop to me. Yeah. S-N-O-P-E-S, which Snoop. will be fact-checking for Facebook employees left this almost exclusively. That's right. So Snopes is, that's what it is. It's a fact-checking website. And now they're going to be fact-checking all of the news on Facebook. And if Snopes deems it as fake news, then they get to remove it. Now, the problem with that is like you just said in the article, Snopes is employed by exclusively the left. Now, an even more interesting fact is that Snopes is funded by George Soros. No. So now Girl. we have, the, we so. have the largest <laughs> social media platform in the universe being fact-checked by George Soros. Wow. Okay, so it, it'd be like, wow. how come all these sheep are missing? Let's go ask the wolf. <laughs> No, no, it's not, it was yeah. some fox over there from the right. That's a great yeah, analogy. It, it, it's, it, it is the left controlling the media. You see, news is news, and it's right or wrong by the person who's judging it. Yeah. And no one has the right to tell us that the coming of Jesus Christ is wrong. That's right. We, beat, we, we stand on it. We live on the word of the living God. And God is trying to save America. Yes. God, you know... His mercy. I, he has given us mercy. I, I, I'm, it's going to take me two days to get the Reagan interview all the way through yeah. because it's, it's, uh, it's probably a half hour of video, but mm. we're going to talk, talk about it. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. I had my hands physically on the tape for the first time yeah. in, a few hours ago. And I looked at it, and I played the end of it, and I played the part that 
was not even meant to be on the air. But everything that was being said privately and publicly by Ronald Reagan is almost to the key and to identity of what is being said right now with Donald That's Trump. Right. Yes. Yes. And, and actually, if you live back there, you will know the criticism. The man who most considered to be one of the greatest presidents in history right. was considered a fanatic and not trustworthy with the, with the key to the, the atomic yeah. bomb. You know, didn't, didn't, didn't want him with his hand on that. Uh, right, they, right. Use, they always use that. You, it, as soon as you hear that argument, you know they're trying to beat that candidate down. Right. And that's the, that's the tool. That's right. The shaking is just beginning. That's right. Yes. The earthquake that happened right after Trump was elected. What town was it in? Christ, Christ Church. Mm -hmm. Christ Church. Can you memorize that for me? Mm -hmm. The great earthquake that took place just after the election took place. Well, if you know anything about prophets and you know anything about God's prophecies, God will shake a mountain. God will, will, will speak mm -hmm. through the angels. God will do all these things. Well, when, a, when Christ's church mm -hmm. is shaken by a mighty earthquake mm -hmm. to a prophet, that means God's saying, I'm going to shake my church. And I believe God is about to shake America, going to shake their... And you think because we've elected Donald Trump, we got peace and safety? I mean, people are need to stop preparing. Professor, did you know people were buying guns every day more than the day before for the last years? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. While a certain president was in, in office. Right. And now that Donald Trump has been elected president mm -hmm. to be, they have stopped Plummet. buying guns. It's plummeted. But we can't go back to sleep. Right. If, if anything that Reagan interview proves... He's saying the same things that are appropriate today. Well, we elected him and we went to sleep. And the left got even farther along than when they were what they were in the 70s. That's so so yeah. we can't go back to sleep. We can't say Donald Trump is going to fix everything. We have to stay awake. We That's won it. the battle. We won the battle. Now, Professor. Yes. The American Revolution. Yes. Did it take one battle to win the American Revolution? It's an analogy. I, I even said this to my friend Newt a couple of weeks ago. You're talking about Newt? Gingrich, yeah. And we believed, you know, we woke up the day after the election, and to use a revolutionary analogy, it's like, okay, we've had the Battle of Yorktown. The struggle's over. Let's go home. No. What we have now witnessed is, uh, is Lexington and Concord. We still have times we have to get through. When we elected Ronald Reagan, a lot of us fell asleep, and we let Congress run amok. And always remember, the debt that was incurred during the Reagan administration was engineered by the liberals in Congress, who they then pointed at Ronald Reagan and blamed. Newt does another revolution in 94. What happens? We went to sleep again. Don't fall asleep this third and final time. This is our last chance. If we fall asleep now, we really got a problem. And, and let me just throw one more point in here. When you have a person who will no longer be first lady in four or five weeks, turn around and tell America, I've lost hope. What kind of message? There used to be some sort of time when an outgoing administration would be helpful and shake hands and say, what can we do? That's right. Instead, there is a deliberate poisoning of the waters that's going to be happening across these next several weeks prior to the inauguration. It will continue afterwards. Don't fall asleep. Otherwise, we're never going to reach Yorktown. We're never going to reach, as Ronald Reagan said, the city on the hill. We're going to lose it. So what, what do you do to stay awake and not, you know, you don't want to be mean. You don't want to do things the way they do things. Mm -hmm. You still want to be godly. You still want to be righteous. Mm -hmm. What do you do to stay awake? Well, watch this show for starters. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We have a president that wouldn't name the terrorists. These terrorists. That's right. In the day that we're taping this, in the 24-hour in the period, we've been taping this program. Mm-hmm. 
The terrorists have attacked three times in three different parts yes, of the world. Yes, yes. And they're murdering, they're killing. Yes. And we've got to pray. Yes. It's not the millennium. No. Mm -hmm. This is probably the first time in history that America tried to change the election after the people, the people voted. Yep, the Do people you know of any election where the people post, just said we're going to change Post-Civil it? War, there was one. Post-Civil War. Post-Civil War, back in the 1870s. And remember, we the deplorables, remember? Oh, yeah. We who cling to the Bibles and, oh, and, and, and the guns, in several states, it was a razor-thin margin. Mm -hmm. If not for the Electoral College, in their brilliance, the founders created it, we wouldn't be having this show as we're having it right now. Mm -hmm. But it was razor thin. We've skirted back from the edge. We did the same thing with Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. Those old enough to remember, I'm seeing some heads nodding mm -hmm. in the audience. Yeah. We were nose to nose with the Soviets. Yeah. And as said in your program, it was prophetic. That was a prophetic interview. Mm -hmm. 1979, yes. where Reagan expressed outright anxiety. We're at the edge of Armageddon. This is turning into Sodom and Gomorrah. We turned it back. Right. I wanted to say one personal observation. In 1986, I was in the Soviet Union. I get invited to somebody's house. I walk in, they got a big picture of Ronald Reagan up on the wall. Huh. And I'm like, we're being told in America that all you guys you hate us and everything else. And that room was packed with 20 or 30 people who wanted to meet an American. And you know what they said to me? What? He's our hero. He's going to help set us free. Wow. Uh, These are the people inside enemy territory. We're all saying and Ronald they were Reagan. Right. And they were right. And then in the 90s, we blew the chance under the Clinton administration of forming a closer alliance with the Russians. And we're now paying the price mm -hmm. today. And do you know, just today, I was watching news and I heard them say, and they were interviewing people in other countries about Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And they were saying they love Donald Trump. Right. They, believe, they have hope for their nation. And that's not fake news. That, yeah. <laughs> it is not fake news, though the media will tell us that, because when people go directly to people and talk person to person, you get the truth. Mm -hmm. We don't need the filter of mainstream media anymore. Mm -hmm. We, the people, have the right to get Amen. the truth ourselves. Amen. That's right. And I, I, I'm going to say something really radical right now. No, really? Hold true to the power of the Internet. Our president, our former, well, the president going out, he gave the Internet away. Right. President Obama gave the Internet away. Do you people away. understand you all sat by and let the president of the United States give the Internet to the United Nations and already... Uh, China and others are talking about the rules they want to set in place to control your internet that used to be ours, that was founded in the United States of America. That's right. Am I the only one that gets upset about this? No. Because I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. I may have been sick in bed for four weeks, but I'm still oh. get up. <laughs> and I want to tell you, Ronald Reagan... I'm going to roll, roll some film in the next few days, I think. But <laughs> yes. you're going to see okay. something that is so identical to what once happened, and God gave us one more chance wow. to be saved. Back during the Protestant Revolution, what did the church try to destroy? The printing presses. Yes. And then... When radio came along, the totalitarian states said, we own the radio, not you. Oh. The Internet has always been the, uh, the way for people to talk to people. Back in the 1500s, how did we get word out about the Protestant Reformation? Mm -hmm. It was printing presses so people could read the truth. Mm -hmm. Radio. The Nazis, the Soviets, they took over radios. Mm -hmm. Well, the Internet came out for a free people in a free society, and now some want to clamp down on it and control it so that we can't get the truth anymore. Mm -hmm. Has that ever worked? Yes. They have been able to clamp down. Well, they did, they did in Nazi Germany. They did in the Soviet Union. And you, you are hitting it right out of the park when you're saying, we let it slip away and let us pray that with a lot of things being rolled back in a couple weeks, when we're going to take the Internet back and we're going to control it in America. Here's the thing. I would rather have a president 
who says his mind than somebody who keeps having to spew out the party line. Right. Or have somebody else edit it. That's yeah. Right. yeah. And That's right. you know what? We, we've been so careful politically that we don't want anybody to speak truth or speak their minds. We're afraid. And the co- people that control politics, as we've watched a lot of that, haven't we, lately? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They, they're afraid of those people. Mm-hmm. They don't, you know, and we, we should be afraid of those who take speech from us. Oh, yes. Right. We will be right back after this special message. 2017 is a year of...